Let's talk about a, an important vector named the gradient. The gradient. So f sub u, the directional derivative, at a point x, y, if you didn't notice, it actually is the dot product between two vectors. And let's figure out what those two vectors are. So if I remember my formula, f sub u of x, y is equal to f sub x at the same point x, y times u1 plus f sub y at x, y times u sub 2. So if you think about what two vectors do I need to dot t together in order to get to that relationship, what are they? Well, the first vector will be f sub x, x, y, comma f sub y, x, y. And if I dot that with the unit vector u1, u2, I get the gradient, or I'm sorry, I get the directional derivative. So let's try this. So if I take this vector, do the dot product, this component times this component gives me that. That component times that component gives me that. So it's the dot product between these two vectors. Now this is the unit vector. We already know what that is and where that comes from. This guy right here, this is the new guy. This is considered the gradient. Now I'm going to formally define the gradient vector. If you want to look at your textbook, it's page 745. So the notation that we use when we talk about the gradient, we literally write GRADF, or you can say this upside down triangle with a vector symbol over it. I'm pretty sure that needs a vector too. This is equal to F sub X at the point X, Y, comma f sub y at the point x, y. So using this particular notation, or you can say f sub x at x, y, i, plus f sub y at x, y, j. Now this gradient vector has some pretty cool properties to it, and it's utilized, it will be utilized almost all the way through the rest of the, the topics of Calculus 3. So it's not something that you can just remember and forget about. It's utilized all the time. So let's look at the geometric properties of the gradient. So if f is a differentiable function at the point a, b, in other words, the, the partial derivatives exist. So the partial derivatives exist at the point a, b, and the gradient of f is not the zero vector, then the direction of the gradient of f of a, b is Number one, perpendicular to the contour of F through AB. And it's also in the direction of maximum rate of increase. So if you're standing on a hillside and you know the equation of that hillside surface, if you calculate the gradient at the point you're standing in and you point your face in that direction, you'll actually be pointing at the most steepest path to get up that hill. That's really what it is. So. If you drew a contour or you had like a, a map of the topology of the area, that would be the direction of maximum increase and it would be perpendicular to the contour of the place you were standing. Now, if I just look at the magnitude of the gradient, that is, represents, it's a number that is, is the maximum rate of change of F at that point. So again, if you're standing at some point AB on a surface, you calculate the magnitude of the gradient. That's the steepest slope that you would climb. That's a scalar, the steepest slope you would climb, not a direction. This guy, the gradient is a direction. Its magnitude is a number. So you think the direction and this guy here is just a number. That's not hashtag, it's number. And then the magnitude of the gradient is large when the contours are close together and small when they're far apart. So if a contour goes from one z value to the next, so say two to three, if those contours are far apart, that means that the slope between them is, is small. But if they're really close together, to go the height of one in a shorter span time horizontally means that's a steeper slope versus, well, I have that far to go and that high to go. So the idea is the contours are closer together, it's a steeper slope in that direction. And when they're further apart, it's a less slope or smaller slope. 
Now let's do this problem down here. So we want to find the gradient of f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. And what does the gradient tell you in practical terms? So according to our definition, the gradient of f is equal to f sub x at x, y, i plus f sub y at x, y, j. So I just need the partial with respect to x of this guy, which is 2x, plus the partial with respect to y of this guy, which is 2y. Now sometimes it's a lot of letters to mess with, so I just write it 2x comma 2y. Now that's a vector. Once I have an ordered pair that I'm looking at specifically, I can make it a vector with constants in each spot. But right now it's just variables because we don't know from where we're going or where we're coming. So my gradient of f is this guy. What does the gradient tell you in practical terms? So I would say at a point, x, y, the gradient vector 2x, 2y is perpendicular to its contour. I don't think you're going to see that if I write that. in the direction of max rate of change. Maximum rate of change. And you want to think of that as you would be going uphill along the steepest path. Now, we have studied two things in this section. One is a directional derivative, f sub u of xy, and then we also have the gradient of f. One of the problems students have is getting these two things mixed up. So the directional derivative is just the slope of a tangent vector. So this is actually a scalar or a number. But the gradient is actually a vector. And it's a vector that points in a particular direction of maximum rate of change. You utilize a gradient to calculate the directional derivative. And we utilize a gradient for other things, but right now, the gradient can be calculated to calculate the directional derivative, which is a rate of change or a derivative at a point. So those words that you remember from Calc 1, derivative at a point, et cetera, et cetera, it's the same thing. It's a scalar just like it was before, where the gradient actually represents a vector that points in the same direction as maximum rate of change. Okay, now let's do the problem on the next page. All right, so this says we are going to Let's see, I might have to adjust this just a tiny bit so you can see the whole problem. I apologize. All right. So we're going to find the gradient of the surface f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared at the point minus 1, 1. And then we're going to sketch the gradient on the contour plot and make sure that we take care that the direction and the magnitude are accurate. All right, so this is a weird contour plot. It's kind of hard to see some of the stuff, but I will say that this has a z value of 1. This has a z value of 2, 3, 4. And this is a contour plot of x squared plus y squared. So each of these is the z value that would make the circle. So when x squared plus y squared equals 1, I have that circle. x squared plus y squared equals 2, I have that circle. All right, so that means at this circle, that length there is radius 1. 
This is radius square root of 2, square root of 3, and then 2, which is square root of 4. Okay, that's, so that's how that works. The contour map of my actual function here. But let's go ahead and find the gradient, which we did in the previous section. So the gradient of f is equal to, generically, 2x comma 2y. Now, if I input the ordered pair that I'm worried about, minus 1, 1, that gives me a nice vector of minus 2, 2. So there is my gradient vector. I want to draw this gradient vector on my contour, starting at the point minus 1, 1. So if we think about this, that length right there is minus 1, and that length right there is 1, so I need to be somewhere up here. Now, does the point minus 1, 1 actually sit right on top of one of these contours? So let's figure that out. So where is minus 1, 1 on the picture? Or on the contour, for a lack of saying anything else. Where is minus 1, 1 on the picture? So uh, which contour, if any? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, z equals x. So my x is minus 1 squared plus y being 1 squared. That gives me a z value of 2. So my ordered pair minus 1, 1, from which my gradient is going to spring, has to be on the contour that is labeled 2. And that's this guy, right, the second one from the center. That means that if I do minus 1, 1, I should be sitting right on top of the contour right there. So that point right there is minus 1, 1. Now from there, that's my starting point. I'm going to draw the vector minus 2, 2. Now I know that the distance from the center to that mark is one unit. And from here, I need to go two units out this direction, negative two, and then I have to go two units up. So negative two i from here, negative two i, and then positive two j. So I'm actually going to do two, two units here. Remember the distance from the center to this first contour is one. So that's one unit, two units. So I'm going to do negative 2i, put little dash marks here, and then I have to go up to j. I'm trying to be precise here because that's what the question is asking me to do. Sketch the gradient. Now the gradient just isn't any random thing. It actually has a particular magnitude that corresponds with it. So I go out here. This distance here is 2i, and this is 2j according to the contour map. So I have to do that displacement to get my gradient vector. So that is the actual gradient vector right there. That includes the direction and magnitude are accurate. Now sometimes we don't care about the magnitude, but in this case, the magnitude is actually accurate. It doesn't just go and squish it in between these two contours. It's actually showing that, well, it's pretty stinking stink steep because that's a pretty long vector in comparison to the rest of the picture. If I actually had started on a contour that was further away, the magnitude of the gradient would be shorter. From this guy in this direction, it would be a little longer because the contours are slightly closer together here than they are here. So there's my gradient, including the magnitude and including the right length. So now on the next few pages, there are some more problems, uh, numbers 4 through 7. So use this, these examples that you have and complete problems 4 through 7 on the next pages for class. Number 4 through 7 for class. And we have a little bit more of this section to cover, section 14.5.